This is the story of the world's worst children by David Williams and illustrated in glorious colour by Tony Ross. The world's worst children. The world's worst children by David Williams. For Tom and George, two of the world's best children. And for Wendy and the Savannas. We'll skip this bit and get to the children. These are the contents. First, we have Dribbling Drew. Here we have Petula Perpetual Motion. Bertha Blubberer. Nigel Nitboy. Peter Picker. Grubby Gertrude. Windy Mindy. Ernest Ernest. Sophia Sophia. Brian Wong is never wrong. Dribbling Drew. Dribble of drool. Dribble of pool of drool. Damp shoes and socks from the pool of drool. Dribbling Drew. Once upon a time, there was a boy named Drew. Drew dribbled a lot. This wasn't just normal, everyday dribbling. The odd globule of gob gloop running down your chin. Oh no, this was dribbling on an industrial scale. Here was a boy who could dribble litre upon litre of dribble a day. Now you may wonder why dribbling Drew dribbled so much. Well, it was because he was an incredibly lazy individual. If he could, he would sleep 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. And as Drew snoozed, he drooled. Plop went the drool as it landed on the floor. On school mornings, the boy would have to be dragged out of bed by his feet. If he had his way, Drew would be wheeled to school every morning in his bed. And as soon as he arrived at school, he would go straight back to sleep. <sighs> plop. <sighs> plop. Drew liked nothing more than having a nice long snooze during his lessons. He had even been known to take a sleeping bag into school. That way he could doze through every single subject. PE was a hard one to sleep through though, but Drew found a way. For example, during football matches he would ask to be in goal and then climb up to the net and have a nap. In any, if any of the kids scored a goal, he would moan if they celebrated too loudly and woke him up. Because Drew slept through every lesson, he always found himself bottom of the class. When Drew snoozed in lessons, he would dribble all over his desk. <sighs> Plop. <sighs> Plop. <sighs> Plop. The dribble would trickle down to the floor where a large puddle of drool would collect. If the lesson was dreaded double history, the dribble would end up as something of a pool. No one knew quite what was in Drew's dribble. It was transparent like water, but thick and sticky like glue. One time, his history teacher, Miss Past, ran over to Drew's desk to shout at him for falling asleep in class again. The unfortunate lady slipped on the dribble, shot across the floor and flew straight out of the window. Ah! She was found upside down in a nearby hedge with her tweed skirt up over her head, her big frilly knickers flapping about in the wind. The day our story starts 
there was a school trip to the Natural History Museum. This was a wondrous place full of all sorts of treasures from moon rock to dinosaur skeletons. The museum even housed a life-size cast of a blue whale as Drew's class pulled up outside the museum in the school coach. Mr Nummings, the science teacher, handed out his dreaded homework sheets. Now listen carefully, children. On these sheets, I want you to make a list of all the exhibits you see in the museum today. Oh, do we have to, sir? moaned Drew, dribbling Drew, shift, shift stifling a yawn, dozing on the couch for an hour, had tired the boy out, and now he was ready for bed. A pool of drool had collected at his feet. Yes, Drew, we do have to, yelled the teacher, and I want you to stay awake during this visit. Mr Nummings turned back to the rest of the class. Now, everyone, the pupil who writes down the most exhibits will be top of the class, so keep looking and listening the whole time. Right, out you get. As they walked through the museum's giant wooden doors, all the children marvelled at the huge skeleton of a Diplodocus, which took pride of place in the great hall, but Drew simply yawned. Then he broke away from his teacher and classmates and found a nice quiet place to have a nap. It was on top of a glass case housing a stuffed dodo, a bird that had become extinct centuries before. No one would disturb him up there. Drew climbed up using a stuffed giraffe as a ladder. He lay down and closed his eyes. Then the boy slept and slept and slept and dribbled and dribbled and dribbled. The boy, the boy could sleep absolutely anywhere, standing up during a rock song concert, hanging upside down from a tree, even on a roller coaster, as everyone around him screamed. This particular day, Drew slept for so long that he was still, still asleep when the Natural History Museum was locked up for the night. Without anyone realising, he was still there when all the lights turned off. All night, Drew slept, and as he slept, he dribbled. <sighs> plop. <sighs> plop. <sighs> plop. Drew dribbled and dribbled and dribbled. Then he dribbled some more. The spot of drool beneath him spread into a puddle. Soon, it was a lake of spittle. By dawn, Drew's sea of dribble had filled the entire Natural History Museum. In the morning, Winston, the burly security guard, arrived bright and early to unlock the doors and open the museum as he did every day. However, this was no ordinary day. The first thing Winston noticed was a transparent fluid oozing underneath the doors. Hmm, very strange, he thought. Maybe... One of the daft old professors has left a tap running. Next, the security guard tip, dipped a toe of his boot into the liquid and realised he couldn't be water from a leaky pipe. Whatever this was, it was thick and sticky. Worried that the museum might have been flooded, Winston flung open the giant wooden doors as fast as he could. Nothing could have prepared Winston for what happened next. Whoosh! Whoa! The big man screamed like a baby. A tidal wave of drool washed him clean off his feet and he found himself travelling at, at speed down the street. Closely behind, the security guard floated some of the biggest exhibits from the museum. A stuffed polar bear, the, the life-size cast of the blue whale, even the Diplodocus skeleton. They all bobbed along the streets of London on this rushing river of dribble. Atop the glass case that housed the dodo was Drew. In all the commotion, he had finally woken up from his long sleep. 
As he floated down the road, the flood of his own spittle destroyed everything in its path. Cars, lorries and even buses were swept off the ground and began bobbing on the colossal ooze of drool. Drew leaped off the glass case onto the roof of a nearby building. From that safe place, he watched more of the exhibits from the museum pass by. Giant bird's eggs, a stuffed gorilla, a model of an elephant. The boy reached into his blazer pocket. He still had the worksheet his teacher, Mr Nummings, had given him at the start of the school trip. Drew made a note of everything that he saw. Every single exhibit from the museum floated past and he wrote them all down. Mars Rock, a Neanderthal school, a marble statue of, of Charles Darwin, a giant squid, a stuffed vulture, an earthquake machine, a model T-Rex, the list went on and on. A seahorse pickled in a jar, a model volcano, a fossil of a prehistoric fish, a spacesuit, a stuffed giraffe, an old lady clinging to the top of her shopper, a model of a woolly mammoth. To his credit, Dribbling Drew spent hours listing every single thing he saw gushing, re, uh, gushing as the gushing river of drool swept all the museum's precious exhibits out to sea. The next day in class, Drew proudly handed in his worksheet to Mr Nummings. Aside from a few spots of dribble, it was perfect. After looking through all his pupils' work, the science teacher announced the results. I can reveal that the winner of... 100% is Drew, said Mr Nummings. The boy was top of his class for the very first time in his life. Before he was promptly expelled as a punishment for destroying everything in the Natural History Museum, Drew was put to work there. His job was to reassemble the diplodocus skeleton that had been recovered from the bottom of the sea. He was not to stop until this giant jigsaw was finished. Dribbling Drew didn't get any sleep for the next ten years. Oh, Drew. Oh, Drew. You dribbler.